Today we are going to talk about translation method. I have seen in my classroom that many students learn English language by translating words, by translating each and every word so they can understand the meaning of that sentence. But I'm telling you that in a short run, you feel like uh, it improves your level of understanding, but in the long run, it will prevent you from speaking English fluently. You will never be able to speak English fluently if you are translating each and every word because translation method never works. I'm telling you that I have seen lots of students struggle after, you know, after the end of the course because they, ha they have this habit to translate. Even though when I tell my students that do not translate, stop translating, I tell them politely, I tell them strictly, but once it becomes your habit, you cannot help it, you know, you cannot stop using it. So I'm telling you right now that if you are beginners level, if you are learning English uh, from the scratch and if it is your habit to translate and if you are starting to translate each and every word, then stop right now. It will not help you because I'm telling you why. Imagine that you are you are actually having a proper conversation, a practical conversation with someone. So first of all, you have to think for the right idea and then you have to translate those vocab those words into English language. You have to translate vocabularies, words and translating that sentence into your English language and then you are actually speaking it. So the entire process, thinking, then translating and then speaking, it takes longer time and it spoils the entire conversation and you will never be able to speak faster. You will never be able to speak fluently and that makes you hesitant. That makes you scared because you will feel like you will you are you you are leaving behind the person who is sitting in front of you if the person is fluent you will be scared to speak because you will be taking longer time to utter a sentence and the person will be speaking faster you will lose your confidence you will never be able to practice language in front of a fluent speaker so i'm telling you now do not translate otherwise it becomes your habit and it prevents you from speaking english fluently so translation method stops you from speaking English fluently. Getting it? Now, second thing is uh, culture. Language has a direct connection with culture. Even when you translate something in English, in your own language, if you are translating English into, from, into your own language, how can you translate the culture? For example, in English language, when you go to someone's funeral, you say, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm really sorry that he died right and uh, let's say that uh, i'm from pakistan my language is urdu so i never go to someone's funeral and i say that main bahut bahut mazrat khao ke ye band is is insaan ka intikal ho because that's not the culture here why you are uh, in urdu language if you are saying that i apologize that a person died i am sorry that he died yeah, I'm sorry for your loss. The person will say, why are you sorry? Like, you have nothing to do with it. Why are you apologizing? Why are you feeling, feeling solid? sorry? So that's why when you are translating English into when you are translating uh, your, your language into English language or English language into your own language, when you're translating words, when you're translating and then speaking, it, uh, you know, it prevents you from understanding the culture. And then you might create some confusion imagine in pakistan if you are from pakistan imagine that you're going to a funeral and you're saying that okay main bahut bahut mazat khaun, ya, main bahut bahut ge, ya, is bande ke the the person will be surprised jisse aap baat kar rahe, okay like why you are saying that you are sorry so never translate english language because uh, another morning another example it just came into my head when uh, you're talking with someone in Urdu language, we have uh, this uh, uh, age difference, right? For when you're talking with elder, uh, the words are different. When you're talking with elder, you say up. When you're talking with uh, your, you know, the person who is with the same age that you are, you will say tum, right? So in English language, it's you. If you're talking in Urdu, if you're talking with your father, you will never say tum, you will say up right but in english language it's always you there is no difference in there now second is 
in urdu language when you are looking at uh, liquids you know they have a male and female thing for example uh, when when a cup of tea is spilled so it's it's a female like uh, chai gir gayi it's a female thing chai gir gayi and uh, when a uh, water is is spilled jab pani gir jata hai it's pani gir gaya it's a male thing but in english language that's there is no such thing their words are not male and female so that can help, that can you know that can be problematic second is like when you meet with someone in the morning in english you say good morning but in pakistan you never say subah subah bakhair like i have never in my entire life said anyone that subah bakhair you know it's uh, it's not a part of our culture in the morning we say that uh, when you meet with someone in the morning we say uh, how are you we say assalamu alaikum ya did you have breakfast right so we never say good morning in urdu language so if you translate good morning into urdu language it's like subha bakhair but that's not the case like a native speaker of urdu language would never say to subha bakhair to anyone in the morning right at uh, normally when uh, same way when you are talking with someone at night and you're saying that okay good night so if you translate good night in urdu language it would be shab khair right but uh, i have never said that to anyone in urdu language that's not the kind our that's not our culture we say okay chalo so jao ya okay baad mein milte hain ya subah milte hain let's meet in the morning let's talk in the morning but we never say good night so when you're translating one language into another language you are forgetting the part of the culture the culture aspect of that language that's why do not translate if you want to learn a language learn english language you learn that language on the base of conditions on the base of scenarios talk to a native speaker and observe that what do they do in that scenario in pakistan uh, when you are sitting in a restaurant a waiter will, will come to you and waiter will not say main aapki kis tarike se madad kar sakta hu waiter will not say that right uh, in america the waiter might come and say that how can i help you today yeah are you ready for the order right have a have a nice evening that's not the culture here so imagine and or talk with the native native speaker or talk with your teacher and talk with them and says that what should i say in that current condition in that specific condition in that specific scenario when when i meet with someone in the morning what should i say when i meet with someone uh, in a restaurant what should i say when i meet with someone after a very long time what should i say so learn language in that manner learn learn language based on scenarios based on circumstances based on situations that will help you improve your language skill if you if you're learning english with uh, with translation method it will never help you if you're learning english by focusing that by dialogues like uh, how what would you say when you talk with a waiter what would you say when you talk with your friend what would you say when you talk with your boss so if you are learning language in that manner the chances of learning language the chances of having a grip to that language will go higher and and your fluency will also increase you will never have to think a lot it becomes your habit and then you will speak that language like your own mother language so in the end i want to say that do not translate never ever translate when you are learning a language